what I have here is a large washer. I'm putting this on the bottom just to distribute the pressure, any pressure caused by the bolt or the pulling of the belt towards the motor side. I don't want to warp this. So this just this large washer just spreads out the pressure on the bottom side of this. On the top side, once we screw this through, we'll place the pulley in there. And then we'll place two nuts on top just to lock it in. But due to the fact that this is made for five millimeter, I made a couple bushings out of small brass tubing that'll fit inside and they're just slightly longer than the width of the pulley just so when I tighten down the nut that the pulley gets to kind of float as, as opposed to being pressed down by the nut itself and cause that would cause binding I'm using another screw as, as an example this will end up being stacked like this. This allows the pulley to move freely and stay in position. So we'll get the first nut on. Because this assembly is not really designed to be removed I'm gonna put a second nut on top if I can maybe with the forceps this is just to lock it in position to lock to lock the bottom nut by binding together they should not back off You know, there's no reason for this to back off, but this this is a device that does move a lot, so it could potentially work its way off just through vibration. two nuts, a nut on the bottom, nuts on the top, and the bushing to allow it to have a little bit of travel and see properly with wherever we uh, set the pulley on the, the motor pulley. Down the bottom, you see this here, that just distributes any low pressure from the belt tension across a wider area to keep that a hole from punching out in the plastic where the screw is. Using a couple of these corner braces, they're one inch corner braces. You see the brand in local big box hardware store where you get them. We're gonna make an assembly like this for the timing pulley. And this will go here to marry up with the other pulley that's behind here and the belt will wrap around and connect to the uh, X mount the main thing is to make sure whichever way you mount this that this pulley lines up with the other pulley I use the um, the y-axis rod it's kind of a guide when this, we're just eyeing it up, when this is roughly over the middle of the y-axis rod, and this is over the middle, then I know they're lined up. We'll mark the spot where we think, where we think this should be placement-wise, 
And then we're also going to get a put another piece of aluminum behind here that's going to extend up above it just to catch the bottom of the frame. And what that'll do is once it's locked into here, that'll prevent this from twisting like that. Because we only have one hole that'll be going through the frame and attaching to this pulley assembly. So it prevent it from movement like that and which could cause the timing belt to skip off its track. We'll add a piece of aluminum just to make sure that it can't turn. This is the piece of aluminum I added to the back. I've drilled a hole, a second hole for a rivet because even though this screw will go through and this is just a temporary screw, we'll use a, a longer screw that we will put a wing nut on on the front side of the frame to allow for tensioning the belt that's this belt tensioning um size of this should be able to fit above the SHA 12 in the top of the frame pretty snug enough that it will allow this to slide back and forth but also tight enough that once it's at the top of the frame it won't be able to turn because this only had one point of attachment, I ended up drilling a second hole in between the nut and the corner of this corner bracket to accept the rivet. But when it sits, and this is the top at the frame and the bottom just above the SHA, SHF-12, your screw should line up being below the screws for the corner brackets of the frame corner brackets. And the, the screws for the SHA, SHF-12s. Man, it's a tongue full. A mouthful. Because you don't want these screws touching those. Or getting in the way or having any kind of collision. So right about there. So this looks good position wise as far as its height. Um, I'll set it once I have the rivets in place. Once I have the rivet in place. I'll take the screw out and check its position on the frame itself and then I'll mark the frame and drill a hole there. You see now rivet in place yeah it popped out the ball but it's still holding. And because I'm going on the inside this will sit like this between the SHF12 and the frame and that prevents side to side movement and this will slide like that to provide tension once we have this screw and wing nut in place measuring the spot that was marked on the inside of the frame and trying hopefully I measured exactly the same on the front side of the frame. It's a little bit easier to access for the purpose of drilling from this point. Um, mine ended up being 9 16 from this edge and so I've measured there as you can see it's just over a half and also end up being from the top of the frame here 10 16 or 5 8 so the line that I marked here should should be an inch and five eighths, you know, below. I was able to get this lined up, drill through the opposite side. I reamed the hole out just a bit to allow this to slide freely. This won't move too much, so I'm not really worried about wear on the um, aluminum frame. You can put a brass bushing in there to allow it to slide better and to also protect the frame from the threads from this moving. As you see by the action here, this is what the loops are up and you can see this acting as a tensioning device. There's that pulley here. And it allows that to slide back and forth. So once the belt's on there, We'll use this as a means of tensioning that belt. 
and we'll we'll put the belt on without much slack but this allows um, fine-tuning the tension of it and this also prevents any movement because we put the piece of aluminum behind the corner brace piece that you know this assembly we designed so this stays upright and in line you don't have to worry about it falling this way or falling that way getting out of alignment you can use anything you want to add, add as a spacer behind the wing nut the spacer there is to, is to make sure that your cap nut that you use for this uh, SHF-12 does not interfere with turning so as long as your spacer is long enough to keep the wing nut from interfering with this go for it right now I have um, just a nut that's larger than the screw and it acts as a spacer you can put a couple of nuts you can stack washers whatever whatever you want you can even print out something after you've uh, got your printer up and running and tuned and dialed in perfectly you can even print out some um, bushings or spacers and replace those so that's how that assembly goes and um, we'll do the same thing on the other side as well